Now we can finally process our first set of data, first survey. So the way we do that is by going to the surveys page and simply clicking the new survey button. This brings up a form that we just simply need to fill in from top to bottom. So first off, we've got the survey name, um, which obviously you can just give a useful name that has meaning to you, um, so that you know which data set it is. Second, you can then choose which organization it will belong to. So if you um, have the ability to create surveys for multiple organizations, you can select which organization this data set will belong to. In this case, um, I only have one, and it's going to belong to wildlife conservation. Next, you can give it an optional description, just giving yourself some extra information as to perhaps where that data set is from or something like that. Um, and then you can set um, the permissions for that data set. So normally you'll just leave it as the default level of access. So whatever the permissions are for the various members of the organization, they are left alone. Um, but if it's a, for example, for example, a more sensitive survey, you can set the default level of access to hidden, for example. And then that survey will be hidden from everybody except the admins and yourself um, for that particular organization. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, that can apply to obviously um, the access side, but also whether people are able to annotate it. Um, but that can you can then even set up specific user level um, permission exception. So if there are, uh, for example, for Mark, I can specifically give them right access or hidden access or anything like that. To, so that's different from their standard level of permissions. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it to, to the default permissions. Next, you can choose the species classifier for your survey. So um, we've got a number of different classifiers available to, uh, to you. Um, so you can simply look at the region for which it applies, as well as the description associated with it to see which one you'd like to use, as well as whose classifier it is. Um, so in this case, there is a sub-Saharan African species classifier that we would like to use. You can also use the search bar applies to that as well. And then lastly, we can select which files we're wanting to upload for the survey and then insert what we call a site identifier and a camera identifier. So um, the site identifier and the camera identifier identify the naming schema of your, um, of your sites and your cameras. And so I'll take this opportunity to sort of walk you through um, data formats to explain what I mean. So <clears throat> on my local storage, I've got my camera trap data in a folder. And inside here, I've got, um, in this case, just one survey called Quality 2017. But, you know, in theory, you could have as many as you want, you know, many different ones. And so this is the data set I want to upload. So in theory, you just want to click the top level of that, um, the top level folder there and just upload the entire thing. And so the idea is that most people have their survey schema, their, their sites and cameras um, encoded into their nested folder structure um, that their, their data is stored in. So typically you'll have Quality 2017 and then a folder per um, physical location or site, and within that, a folder per camera. And so that's what we're trying to extract that information automatically for you. So uh, in this case, in, within Kualuzi, we've got all these different folders here. So our sites are named K followed by numbers, so K9 or K11 in this case, K for Kualuzi. And so the idea is a site is a physical location that it can have one or more cameras, in theory up to an infinite number of cameras. And so typically that would mean um, perhaps a waterhole, we've got multiple cameras trained on the same waterhole, or a game trail, we've got, say, um, a, a camera on either side um, to pick up both flanks of an individual for individual ID purposes. Um, so that's that sort of idea. So in this case, um, our cameras are actually encoded as for K9, C17, and C18. Um, but that's just an example. So in this case, they're in the same folder, um, the, the identifiers are in the same folder, but you could very easily have under this K9 folder, a C17 and a C18 folder, 
and then the images. It won't make a difference. Because um, what the system actually does is you now enter in this case, your site identifier is capital K and your camera identifier will be a cap capital C. And then when it tries to import this image, it looks at the full path of that image, which will include quality 2017 slash that slash folder name, I mean file name, and then it'll just read along that from left to right and say, oh, capital K followed by number, that's clearly the site name, carry on reading, oh, now there's a C followed by a number, that's clearly C17. Um, and that's that's how it'll do it. So it won't actually care whether it's this whole um, string of characters or K9 slash C17 being a subfolder slash anything else. So it's, it's really, really straightforward. Um, so that's, that's the simple case though, where you're just looking for a letter followed by a number or a string of characters. So for example, the word site or the word camera or cam, something like that. But um, you can actually um, choose the advanced option here. And for instance, then um, actually encode um, your, your name scheme. So if you've got a, um, a, a grid pattern, let's say, where the, I don't know, the rows are letters and the columns are numbers. So, you know, A, 1 to 5, B, 1 to 5, etc. You want to now be able to tell the system to be able to detect that. You can then either just put in a regular expression here directly um, and you can, you can follow the link there to see what that is, but essentially it's a search query. Um, otherwise, you can build, use this little tool to build up one here. So you can, for instance, look for um, any uppercase letter um, followed by any um, any digit occurring, let's say one or more times, um, to allow you for um, you know one or one one in case of eleven, obviously. So if there's multiple let, uh, individual numbers, so you can encode anything you want there like that. Um, and but that's obviously if you need it. In this case, we just want the letter K. Um, let me just select my files quickly before I forget. So it's under my pictures, camera trap data, Quality 2017. You'll select the top level folder. You'll see it automatically extract that for you. Um, and then it'll also update as you go along the detected structure of your, of your survey. And that obviously you need to make sure it's correct um, before you start importing. Um, as I said to you, um, we're going to be using a camera identifier, but there are some other options. You can basically just have it that each bottom level folder in your um, in your, your folder structure can be treated as its own separate camera. Otherwise, you can just have one camera per site or a custom camera identifier. Um, so in this case, again, you can build an advanced um, regular expression if you want. Um, otherwise, you can just, in this case, press C. So now we can check our um, structure to see if that's correct. We've got nine sites, um, K, K11, K12, K14, etc. And each one, two cameras and three in this case um, for K23, C21, C22, etc. So I can now check that. I am indeed happy with that. And then now I can simply click create. Now you can see that my, my survey has been created and it started uploading. So there's 6,200 files that are busy uploading. <clears throat> and you'll see that slowly um, built up over time. Um, at any point, if you want to stop that upload process, you can simply click pause. Um, you can simply click pause and that, that, that process will stop. Just give that a second. And then you can see then that you'll have options to delete that survey if you've changed your mind or resume that upload. And you don't actually have to click um, you have to tell it stop. If you accidentally navigated away from the page or anything like that, you can simply click um, resume upload at any time. Just make sure to click the, select the same folder as before and it'll automatically then um, synchronize. It, it, it will look like it's uploading. It just it, That's the file count that you're seeing there. It'll automatically um, synchronize between what's um, you've already uploaded versus what still needs to be uploaded and you'll be able to then um, start uploading. And this will obviously take some time, but once that's complete, everything will then start being run, running through our species classifier and um, our various AIs, and then you can, um, once that's ready, you can proceed.